In this video, the I2C module in the AT Mega328 is programmed in assembly to establish a two-wire serial network between two Arduinos. I2C is a two-wire serial interface, also known as TWI, which has a serial clock line and a serial data line. I2C is used in I.O. devices such as sensors, data converters, and EE prompts. I2C is ideal for interfacing low-speed peripherals to microcontrollers for reliable short-distance communication. A block diagram of an I2C network is shown here. We have a microcontroller program as an I2C master device is interfaced with slave I.O. peripherals through the I2C bus, which is made of two lines, the serial clock line and the serial data line. And the I2C bus is connected to pull-up resistors. The serial clock line carries the clock generated by the microcontroller in order to synchronize the communication between the microcontroller and the slave devices. And the serial data carries the data between the microcontroller and the I.O. peripherals. The I2C network can be configured in different modes. We could have a master transmitter, slave receiver mode, or it could be a master receiver, slave transmitter mode, and so on. In this video, we'll be looking into the master transmitter, slave receiver mode, where we have one microcontroller programmed as a master device interface with another microcontroller programmed as a slave device. In master transmitter slave receiver mode, we have the microcontroller is initialized as a master device to write data. And the device is initialized as a slave to read data and it has an address assigned to it. The communication between the microcontroller and the device begins by sending the start pulse to initiate the data transfer. And the device is listening to the bus and waiting to be addressed by the microcontroller. The microcontroller sends the address of the slave device. And the device will detect its own address and send an acknowledgement feedback to the microcontroller. The byte address sent by the microcontroller is made of a 7-bit device address and the least significant bit is a control bit which indicates whether the microcontroller is writing to the device or reading from the device. The microcontroller receives the address acknowledgement signal from the slave device and sends the data to the device. And the device will receive the data and send the data acknowledgement feedback to the microcontroller. Once the microcontroller receives the acknowledgement signal from the device, it will send the stop pulse to end the data transfer. The ATmega328 I2C registers, also called TWI registers based on the data sheet of the ATmega, is made of the data register the address register, the status register, control register, and bitrate register. We begin with the status register, which has two functionalities. These bits here determine the status of the TWI control and bus, while these two bits here give us the bitrate prescaler, which is a value between 0 and 3. Next we have the bitrate register which stores an 8-bit value used in the calculation of the serial clock frequency of the master device. And the equation used to calculate this frequency is shown here. This value here is the value of the bitrate register and this value here, the exponent, is the value of the bitrate prescaler. So for example, for a uh, system clock frequency of 16 megahertz and a value of TWBR of 12 
and the prescaler of zero, the serial clock frequency would be 400 kilohertz. The control register has the following bits. We have the interrupt bit, which is set when the TWI device has finished a current job. We can check the status of the interrupt bit by using an indefinite loop. Now the bit must be cleared by software to start a new TWI operation. And we can clear the interrupt bit by writing a 1 into it. Next we have the enable acknowledge bit which is set by the receiver slave device in order to generate the acknowledgement pulse feedback sent to the master device. These two bits are the start and stop bits. When set will allow the master device to send the start pulse and the stop pulse to the slave device. This bit here is the write collision flag which is set when data is written into the data register before the end of transmission. Finally we have the enable bit here which will enable the TWI module and the IE bit which will enable the interrupt capability of the I2C device. Next we have the data register. In transmitter mode this register will contain the byte to be sent. In receiver mode this register will receive the byte from the slave device. Keep in mind that this register can only be accessed when the interrupt bit is set. Otherwise collision will occur. Next we have the address register which is programmed in the slave device. Contains the 7 bit address of the slave device. And this bit here is the general call recognition bit. When this bit is set and the master sends the address 0 then this will initiate an interrupt and an interrupt service routine will be processed. In this video two Arduinos are interfaced to form an I2C network. One Arduino is programmed as a master transmitter and the other is programmed as a slave receiver. The system operates as follows. We press the transmit button of the master transmitter and a byte is sent serially to the slave receiver. The slave receiver then displays the byte on port D. We then press the listen button of the slave receiver to enable the slave to listen to the system bus for another incoming byte from the master transmitter. In this quick demonstration, we press the transmit button and the master sends a byte to the slave device and the byte is displayed on the 8-bit LED. We press the listen button to clear the display and put the slave into listening mode, waiting for another byte from the master. A quick look at the assembly code of the master transmitter. First we call this subroutine to initialize the TWI module. Inside the initialization subroutine we want to determine the frequency of the serial clock. First we choose the prescalar value of 0. Then we choose a division factor of 12 to give us a serial uh, clock frequency of 400 kilohertz and then we enable the TWI. Back in the main subroutine and after we initialize the module, we use this indefinite uh, loop to check the status of the transmit button. Once the button is pressed, then we go to the next instruction. Next, we initiate the start of transmission by sending the start pulse. And we do this by calling this subroutine. Inside subroutine I squared C start, we program the control register by enabling the start bit, clearing the interrupt bit, and enabling the TWI module. And then we use this indefinite loop to check the status of the interrupt bit to see whether the transmission is complete. Once the transmission is complete, then we return to the calling subroutine. 
Back inside the main subroutine and after we transmit the start pulse we need to next send the address of the slave device. This 8-bit value contains two parts. The first 7 bits represents the address of the slave device and this control bit here represents the write process. So 0 for write, 1 for read. And then we call the subroutine to send the address to the slave device. Next we send this data byte to the slave device by calling the write subroutine. And then we call the stop subroutine to transmit the stop pulse to end the transmission. And then we jump to label L1 and back to this indefinite loop waiting for another press of the button transmit. And now we look at the assembly code of the slave receiver device. Within the main subroutine, the first thing we do is to initialize the TWI module. Inside subroutine I2C initialization, we store the address of the slave device in the address register, and then we enable the TWI device, and then we enable the acknowledge uh, bit, and then we go back to the calling subroutine. Back inside the main subroutine and after initializing the module, we call this function to enable the slave device to listen to the bus waiting to be addressed by the master device. Inside subroutine I squared C listen and using this indefinite loop, we check the status of the interrupt flag within the control register. Once it is set, it means that the slave have, has received the address from the master device. Next we return to the calling subroutine. Back inside the main subroutine, we call the subroutine to read the byte sent by the master device. Inside subroutine I squared C read, we enable the acknowledge bit and the TWI device and then we go into this indefinite loop checking the status of the interrupt flag. Once it is set, it means data is available in the data register of the slave device. Next, we copy the receive byte inside the data register into register R27 and return to the calling subroutine. Back inside the main subroutine, we output the receive byte to port D and then we go into this indefinite loop waiting for a button press. Once the listen button is pressed, then we clear port D and then we jump to label again to put the slave into listening mode. In a future video, an I2C device such as an EEPROM will be interfaced with the Arduino and programmed in assembly. Thank you for watching.